Okay, let's break down and simplify a cube root expression. So first thing I have written out is my cube root list. Because it's very important you understand to simplify a root, a cube root, you're going to have to use a number that's a perfect cube. So I like to have my list in front of me. Okay, I want to simplify the cube root at 81. And I know what you're all going to say, it's 9. Be careful, this is a cube root. Can you multiply 9 three times to make 81? No, you're thinking of a square root, so be careful. If you look, 81 is not on this cube root list. 81 is located right here. So we're trying to find the biggest perfect cube that factors into 81. And if you know your times tables, 27 times 3 is 81. So I can rewrite 81 as a product. Now, because we're connected by multiplication, I can break this up into two cube roots. Don't forget to keep writing your index of 3. So I know it's a cube root. And now we'll work. What is the cube root of 27? 27 is a perfect cube. You should know that answer off the tip of your tongue. That's 3. So that's why it becomes a whole number, because you did the operation. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Now I want to do the cube root of 3. 3 is not a perfect cube, and because 3 is a prime number, it's in lowest terms. So there's nothing we can do. We cannot perform that operation. That's why that 3 has to stay inside the radical symbol. So cube root of 81 simplifies to be 3 cube roots 3. Do not forget your index, or you'll get marked wrong. All right, 2 times the cube root of 250. 2 is a whole number connected by multiplication, so there's nothing to do with it. We'll just bring it down. If we follow, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we're supposed to always work inside a symbol first. So we're going to deal with the cube root of 250 first. Well, 250 is not on this list. 250 would be right here. 250 is not a perfect cube. So everybody look at your list. What is the biggest perfect cube number that will divide into 250? That's a factor. Anybody know? Very good. It's 125. So we're going to say 125 times 2 would be 250. So we're rewriting this radicand as a product. Now we physically can break this up into two cube root expressions because we're connected by multiplication. And now, again, we're going to leave the whole number alone. We're going to do this operation. We know the cube root of 125 because it's on our list. It's a perfect cube. It's 5 times 5 times 5, so we replace that with 5, which is also a whole number. Can we cube root 2? 2 is not a perfect cube, and because 2 is prime, it's in lowest terms, so we have to leave that expression. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot leave me 2 times 5. 2 is a whole number that was original in the original expression. 5 is the whole number we got out from cube rooting. So 2 times 5 is 10 cube roots 2. That's the expression simplified. Let's try one more. Again, we have a fraction. OK, no big deal. It means when we have a fraction with a root, that root belongs both to the numerator and to the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite it so I can see that. All right, we have cube root 2 in the numerator. Is 2 a perfect cube? No, it's not. 2 is not on the cube root list. Well, what do we know about 2? We know from elementary school it's prime. Prime means it's in lowest terms. So this cannot reduce. We cannot do the cube root of it because it's not a perfect cube, which means we can't get rid of the radical sign. And because 2 is prime, it's as low as it goes. So we just leave the numerator. Now let's look at the denominator. We have the cube root of 343. Well, is 343 a perfect cube? Sure is. It's right on the list. So that means if it is already a perfect cube, there's no work. Tell me what whole number do you multiply three times to give me 343? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the cube root of 343 is 7. And that's your expression simplified. Okay, great. See you in the next module.